Hi, I'm Alistair Ben and you're watching Express Photography. Thank you very much for tuning in again. Um, last week we did a really popular video on note taking and how it can help you to develop your seeing. Uh, if you haven't checked that out, I'll put the link up here and in the notes below. But today I want to take it to the next stage when we actually stop wanting just to make notes, but to actually start composing and arranging and making photographs. So what I want to do today is I want to take you back to two uh, locations that have been super important to me over the years. Uh, one of them is Kirkefell in Iceland uh, that I first went to uh, back in about 2011, 2012, something like that, um, really before it exploded as a location. And the other one is a beach on the north coast of Spain where I used to live actually, very, very close to where I used to live. Um, and what I want to do is take you to those locations show you what they look like and the photographs that I made at those locations over a succession of years, so a number of different visits and how my vision and my interpretation of those locations changed and why I was composing the way I did. So hopefully you're going to find that really, really useful um, and maybe allow you to approach your own composing and image making with a slightly different perspective that will free you up make you more relaxed and allow you to be more creative and more unique and individual. So let's take a look at the first location. This is Kirkefell. This is the most famous, or one of the most famous places on Iceland. Um, and the first time I went there, there was nobody there. Um, I actually camped here for uh, a number of nights over a few weeks. I was on Iceland for six weeks in total and I camped at this location. And during my entire time there, I met one other photographer. And we were so excited to, to be together that we actually spent the whole night photographing together because it was such a unique opportunity. So this is what you're gonna see if you go. And this is the more or less one of the first photographs I made at this place because it was the photo I had seen. It was the composition I had seen uh, from a few of my friends who'd already gone to that location to explore it. Now, of course, this is at night with the Aurora. Uh, there's a certain amount of technique required and it's a four by five. Basically, that four by five composition has eliminated stuff on the right or the left that I didn't think was helping the composition. It wasn't adding anything. Just to the left of the frame, there's actually a bridge that comes into scene. And just on the right, there is the town of uh, Grundefjordur. My apologies to any of my Icelandic watchers for that dreadful pronunciation. So by cropping it to the four by five, I'm eliminating stuff on the left and right of the frame. This is 14 millimeter, so it's quite a wide view. Um, so that is the first step, I think, of composition is what is in the frame versus what is out of the frame. And this is where zoom lenses can be very, very helpful. And also cropping aspect ratios can be very helpful. So it's really a case of what is this photograph about? What is the main subject or what are the main subjects? How are they going to relate to each other? And is there anything that we can eliminate from the sides or the top or the bottom that isn't enhancing or complementing those elements or creating some kind of juxtaposition or conflict. I think one of the biggest pressures we have when we go to these types of locations is pressure. Uh, there's a pressure to make photographs. Most people go to Iceland once. Uh, if you're a professional photographer and you run workshops there, of course you spend weeks and weeks and weeks of the year on the island and you're going back to these locations time and time again every time the weather's different, every time the sun's in a different location, uh, the aurora, no aurora, cloud, no cloud, sunrise, sunset, good conditions, bad conditions, pouring rain, all of these conditions you get to experience and you can kind of cherry pick and find the ones that are most resonant with you. Most people don't have that luxury and it can become a huge pressure to be there to make photographs. And unfortunately, there is no antidote to that other than acceptance. And I would strongly urge you to be open to a variety of conditions so that if you are there when it's suboptimal, you can make photographs that are more um, uh, interesting for those conditions versus uh, images that are reliant on amazing conditions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll through a few images here on Lightroom and look at 
different conditions, different opportunities, and what I did in those conditions. This one here is obviously uh, the <laughs> the real glory shot. I mean, the, at this time of year, the sun was setting behind Kirkifel, um, and it was allowing for a starburst. It was allowing for an opportunity that doesn't happen at different times of the year. This is a seasonal specific thing. Um, now, obviously, when you do get conditions like this, it's a case of optimizing those. In terms of this, this composition, there's a a flow of light from the first waterfall to the second waterfall to the third waterfall to the sun. Everything else is quite dark. I've subdued everything else with dodging and burning um, to just allow those highlights to tell the story. And I think it's super important for us to understand why are we pointing our camera at something and what is it that makes a photograph appealing. This transition of light, this hierarchy of light, the way our eyes will follow the light is probably one of the most important triggers of engagement. If an image doesn't have something that's light, it tends to be quite flat and quite boring. Once I've been there quite a few times, different opportunities presented themselves. Now this is a, it's become a bit of a standard shot now, but back in 2013 or whatever, when I took this photograph, it was still quite new to do things like this. Uh, facing due north, of course, you get the spirals of the circles. Night photography is a skill, uh, not just the technical aspect of nailing, uh, composing in the dark, focusing in the dark, trying to expose in the dark, understanding your camera's limitations, uh, dealing with everything in the dark uh, is obviously very, very challenging. But the thing that's most difficult is composing in the dark because you have to know how the stars are going to move during a period of time and how they're going to then influence other elements of the composition. Uh, I was quite happy with the traffic going through this frame here because it's created this these kind of weird light trails. And again, it's that engagement with light that is really drawing us into this photograph. I really like this one. It's funny, when I was starting to prepare this, this uh, presentation, I found this image and it really resonated with me and I've quickly processed it to reflect the feeling that I wanted it to try and convey. Um, any photograph can be analysed after the effect. We can go in and say, well, this is rule of thirds, or this is flow, or this is diagonals, or this is leading lines, for that horrible word that I don't like. We can analyze any photograph, but when we compose in the field, it's feel. You have to, comp well, you don't have to. You, my preference is to compose by feel based upon what it is that's resonating with you. What is it about the scene that's making you point your camera at it? So I've talked many, many times over the years about the five triggers. These are the five things that I find in the landscape that are the things that we always point our cameras at. If you've watched this channel before, you should know them by heart, so say them along with me. Luminosity, contrast, geometry, color, and atmosphere. Auroras are colorful. The beautiful ethereal green tones, they add something to this photograph. If there was no aurora, we'd still have star trails, we'd have a blue sky, we would lose an element of that colour contrast. There's a contrast between the colour, between the green and the blue. Luminosity, we have areas of light and dark, we have contrast, we have areas that draw our attention in because they're more detailed than other areas. The geometry of that beautiful mountain, the witch's hat, Kirkifel, um, it's so impressive. Uh, that why wouldn't you want to point your camera at it? And there's no reason why you shouldn't point your camera at it, even though there are a hundred million, billion, trillion, zillion, gazillion photographs of Kirkifel, the first time you go there, it will blow your mind. So I encourage everybody to embrace all experiences, especially if you're experiencing them for the first time, and it may well be the trip of a lifetime. Uh, I used to wander around this area quite a lot on my own, and exploring an area from different perspectives is a hugely important thing. Now, me, by this composition, by moving uh, Kirkefell to the left-hand side of the center line, it's drawing our attention in a slightly un unnatural way. It's very traditional to put things slightly to the right of center or on that third line, um, and to draw the eye from right uh, from left to right. That that's a fairly standard sort of compositional technique, which has become very normal for us to do. By putting it on the left-hand side, it creates a feeling of tension. The cool atmosphere here 
no dramatic clouds, very flat light, you know, nothing dramatic going on, little bits of snow on the mountain creating some three-dimensionality. All the elements are coming together in quite a harmonious way. So hopefully you'll see that you can do anything you want as long as it feels right to you or it's conveying the message that you want. Once again, it's eliminating things on the left and right and top and bottom to isolate the frame down to the things that make the most impact and are important to you. This uh, is a very different photograph. Of course, everything freezes in the winter, the waterfalls freeze. This is a kind of precarious place to go, but even on a day where it was so flat and so socked in with cloud, I still felt I was able to add interest to this composition and make a photograph that fits. Cropping it into a 16 by nine, it increases that element of expansiveness. The aspect ratio, if it's tall and thin, it's emphasizing height. If it's long and narrow, it's emphasizing width and expansiveness. The cool tones, the frozen snow and ice, the, the gloominess, the moodiness, the airy etherealness, the brightness of it, it creates a photograph that has an emotional fingerprint. It has feel. And that feel is what you should be feeling. When you're composing, it's about the feeling, the resonance, and the atmosphere that you're trying to convey, that feeling that you're trying to convey. The arrangement of composition is the arrangement of feel. This is the last image I'm going to show you from Kirkefell, and I think it really <laughs> highlights how ingenious you can get if you're prepared to explore an area. Uh, when I made this photograph, um, and actually I've never seen another one like it since, um, I really was excited by this photograph. I had to crawl into a kind of a little snug space in a cave to get right underneath there uh, with a very wide angled lens to capture the icicles coming down and then framing Kirkefell through the middle of that hole. I really like this photograph. Again, it was taken on a day that was so windy, so rainy, so sleety, so miserable that there was actually only one other person on the workshop that was running that was prepared to leave the house. It was so horrible. Everyone else said, no, 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 we're going to stay in and drink coffee all day and do some processing. Uh, so even in bad weather, get out the rain, get out the wind, you can find compositions. And again, it's a case of understanding what the photograph is about. What is the story you're trying to tell? What's the memory that you're trying to remember? What is the note that you're trying to reference? Again, if you haven't watched last week's note-taking video, I urge you to go and do that because this is going to become a sequence of things that we should be practicing to develop our skills as expressive landscape photographers. I'm going to move now to another location. This is the north coast of Spain and I have a very, very good friend who lives there um, and I'd seen his photographs um, online in a forum that him and I used to, sh to uh, participate in. Uh, and this is going way back to like the late 2000s, uh, so like 2009, I think, 2008. And I moved to the north coast of Spain um, and lived there for a year. And I went there because I was making my night photography book and I wanted lots of seascape night photos. <laughs> so I went to the north coast of Spain. This photograph is the photograph that more or less inspired me to go, or this is my version of it. This waterfall falling off these beautiful uh, rocks into the water and then these gorgeous sea stacks in the background there. Beautiful location, one of my favorite places on the planet. Uh, if you want to go there, check out our workshops and when we start running them again, we'll be going to the north coast of Spain. Um, but this was the photograph that inspired me to go, really. As I was there making a night photography book, uh, I was going there a lot at night under different moon conditions, full moons, half moons, all the different phases of the moon to make different types of photographs because that's what night photography is, is understanding the phases of the moon. So I was making photographs at night that were quite, quite new, quite fresh, you know, because this is a beach that hadn't really been photographed at night before. So it was very easy for me to go there and make lots of unique photographs. Um, still using the elements that I had gone there for, the waterfall, the sea stacks, but juxtaposing them with the night light and the stars. In terms of the composition of things like this, this one's a little awkward. The waterfall is cut at the bottom there. It doesn't 
if, if there was a bit more space underneath there. This one makes me cringe a little bit, to be perfectly honest, looking back. And it was taken 10 years ago, so I can cringe a little. Um, but I love the light. And the this thing we talked about a few moments ago, this hierarchy of light is still telling us where to look. The luminosity of the surf hitting those sea stacks, the full moon hitting those sea stacks, is telling us where to look. Now, while I was making this exposure, I was so drawn to the sea stacks that I uh, changed my position somewhat, changed the lens from a wide angled lens to a zoom lens and made this photograph, which is very much a signature photograph of mine. It was, it was a photograph that had a massive uh, impact on my career. It became really well known and um, it became the cover of my night photography book. It, it still has a very strong place in my heart. I do love this photograph. So compositionally, I've eliminated everything else. The beach, the waterfall, the surf, uh, the, the, you know, the, the whole surroundings. The sky is diffused, the, the sky is in there. Um, and I made a photograph that focuses on geometry, uh, the up and downiness of the pinnacles, the luminosity in terms of the surf and the interaction, the contrast. Uh, the, there's a ton of atmosphere in here. Water over a long exposure is always going to be an atmospheric element and that's hugely important and that's something that I think we're going to come on to in next week's video but more of that later. And of course the colour, that blue sort of moonlight hour where the full moon was just bathing everything in this cool gorgeous light. So those five triggers of engagement are massively important to our arrangement because how we arrange those five triggers gives, as I said before with the Kirkefell images, the arrangement of those five elements is what composition is. It's not stuff. It's not sea stacks or pinnacles in sea because the number of comments I used to get saying, oh, what an amazing mountain range in the mist. People thought this was a, a, a mountain range like the Rockies or something like that. And I got that, a lot of comments about that. So it's a bit ambiguous in that regard. The longer I went back to this location, of course, you can't just keep taking the same shot again and again and again. I mean, I've got many <laughs> photographs of those pinnacles in different light and different conditions. So I started to look at other places. You get to wander around and explore. Um, and sometimes it's a case of finding an arrangement of rocks with the way the water interacts with them. And then you use the pinnacles and the background as a, a kind of um, a reference point, an environmental reference point. I used to call these pinnacles a geographical indicator. Uh, you can tell I've got a scientific background. I know where I am in the world when I see those pinnacles. And many other people who know that coast know the beach that I'm on, but they're only there as a sort of geographical reference. And obviously the jagged teeth are always going to catch the eye especially when juxtaposed with some warmer light. So again, composition is um, a diary of engagement. It's a reference for our exploration of an area. And we shouldn't be so hung up about making photographs. We should be hung up about experiencing the place, being excited by being there, making notes that excite us, and then realizing that the notes can be turned into short stories or essays or even books with the more that we throw into them. So I think to, to recap, really, the five triggers of engagement are present in every photograph in varying degrees. There's always luminosity to some degree, un unless you've left the lens cap on, in which case there's just very low luminosity. Luminosity, contrast, geometry, color, and atmosphere, those are the triggers that are going to make you engage with the scene. If you want to explore these concepts more, the 25% discount, Practice 25, is still valid for anything in the shop. You can buy the original book, Luminosity and Contrast, and The Colour of Meaning, and then put the whole thing together with the Dodge and Burn Masterclass, where I teach all the techniques that I know to emphasise what photographs are about. That's what dodging and burning is. It's using our skill to slightly subdue an area or bring up an area to lead the eye through the frame to take it where we want it to go, to allow our viewers to experience our emotional journey through the frame and somehow get a sense or a feeling of what it's like to be there or the, 
the, the, the love or the passion that we have for the landscape. I would strongly suggest that you watch all the videos in this series talking about the power of practice and the importance of practice through to how to see better, how to arrange and compose better. And next week, I'm going to look at what I consider to be one of the most impressive superpowers of creativity, and that is how to manage time. Time is the key to expressive photography. It's the way to really emphasize the feel of a photograph where something is moving. If anything is moving in a frame, we can use time to change the feel of that photograph. So make sure you tune in next week where I'll be exploring the superpower of time. Um, but hopefully you'll have got something out of today. I know I haven't talked about any rules. I haven't talked about any guidelines. I haven't told you how to compose because your creativity is about how you see, how you note take, how you feel, what it is that you want to say. I can't teach you that. I can't tell you what notes to make and I can't tell you where to put things in the frame. Otherwise, it's not your creativity. You're just Alistair Ben clones. And there's nothing I want less in the world than Alistair Ben clones. Uh, there's one of me is quite enough. Thank you very much. So hopefully you found this useful. Do the old usual thumbs up, subscribe, bell notification, leave a comment. It's always massively appreciated when I hear your words of encouragement. Thank you very much for watching. Tune in again next week for the superpower of time. And uh, remember to click on the links below either to watch some of the earlier videos or to take advantage of the 25% discount on our learning material, which hopefully will do for you what it's done for thousands of other people around the world to help them see the world in a better and more exciting way and make photographs with meaning and passion that are yours. Thanks for joining and uh, see you all again very, very soon. Best wishes. Bye for now.